He sits in the Annenberg Joyce Chair of the American Studies Department. Bob Schmuel, a frequent contributor here on The Harvest Show. He was with us a few weeks ago to give us a primer for the Iowa presidential primaries. He's here a few weeks later to help alleviate our confusion that has set in since then. Uh, <laughs> Chuck, here. thanks for not showing what I might have said uh, back then, because <laughs> everything has changed since well, then. Well, it certainly has, and, and let me take a vocabulary lesson from you here. The term Republican establishment is tossed around a lot a bit, and I'm not exactly sure who these people are, but I do know one thing. They don't seem to have the pulse of the American people, because every candidate they support doesn't win. The establishment might be referred to as the gang that can't shoot straight. And all one has to do is look at the last week or so in this campaign. You had Mitt Romney uh, giving his speech against uh, Donald Trump. You had a number of them meeting uh, in secret over the uh, weekend. Um, timing is everything in politics and certainly the Republican establishment couldn't be worse at timing. Mm -hmm. uh, if they wanted to do anything in relation to uh, Donald Trump, they should have started two months ago or three months ago. But all we uh, heard at that point is, oh, he's going to implode. He's not going to go anywhere. Right. Once the primaries get going, the American public will speak and they will reject him. Well, the American public is speaking and they are not rejecting him. Who they are rejecting would be the candidates who represent the Republican establishment. Absolutely. And um, now we're in the situation where uh, I think it's um, fair to say that the only person who really has a shot uh, at some success would be John Kasich from uh, wow. Ohio. I, I can't see <clears throat> it with uh, Marco Rubio in Florida. You look at those numbers, you look at what's happened to his campaign. Uh, Ted Cruz is an interesting uh, case study in the sense that um, someone once referred to him as the insider's outsider. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, he's in the United States Senate, but not a single senator has endorsed him at this point. He is known, and it's certainly on tape and easily available, he is on the floor of the United States Senate, referred to the leader, Mitch McConnell, as a liar. Well, uh, those kinds of statements don't make you out to be a friend of, <laughs> of those with whom you're serving. Mm -hmm. So that, um, the reason I mention it is you take Donald Trump and you add on Ted Cruz, both of them are counter to the Republican right. establishment. Mm -hmm. And that's where they are going into uh, next Tuesday's uh, primaries. Prof Professor Schmuel, let's uh, switch over to the Democratic side. I mean, you know, Hillary has a, she's doing okay. I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like she's going to be the nominee, um, but why is she struggling? I mean, Bernie Sanders, he's, he's been in politics for years, and so has Hillary Clinton. So this is not so much about establishment, but it, there is certainly this wave of voters who are going against, especially younger voters. Um, why is that? Uh, well, I heard an interesting interpretation recently, which is that young people are not rallying behind uh, Hillary Clinton because uh, she reminds the young people of their mother. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, now, I loved my mother, and I'm sure all three of you did. And, and but you don't want her to be president of the right, United States. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, quips aside, there would be uh, a message behind Sanders. Mm -hmm. And um, I am struck, I'm struck by a number of things. One would be that this is the first time he's really declared as a Democrat. You know, he's been right. an independent, independent yes. and yeah. known as a socialist. Okay, that's number one. Uh, but number two, he keeps going around the countryside talking about a political revolution. And uh, it used to be not so many years ago, you didn't use a word like liberal. 
mm -hmm. okay? You, you, you sort of you sort of cushioned it by saying so and so is a progressive right. or something. Liberal, bad word. Political revolution isn't, uh, you know, a verboten term mm -hmm. uh, at this particular point. What he is doing is he's tapping in to many of the feelings that Donald Trump has taken Correct. advantage yeah. of. Mm -hmm. And um, what's so interesting to me is that uh, should Hillary Clinton, as I think will be the case, become the nominee, and should Donald Trump become the nominee, that will be so interesting because other than being flawed candidates from the state of New York, um, they are absolutely polar opposites. I mean, one is your consummate insider, Hillary Clinton. He is the consummate uh, uh, outsider. Uh, and you just go down the line in terms of uh, government experience, no government experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it, it's very interesting that it's breaking down uh, that way. My guess is that uh, Sanders will be uh, a factor uh, going into the rest of the spring uh, in a number of states. Um, and one of the things that will keep him uh, going would be the uh, number of contributions mm -hmm. that he's receiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting back to, to what you mentioned about John Kasich as a, a possible yeah. uh, alternative to Donald Trump as maybe a potential uh, nominee, uh, is there a pathway for that other than a brokered convention? Uh, I, th I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't see it in the numbers. Uh, what he would have to do is have a very strong showing next week, mm -hmm. next Tuesday, in Ohio, mm -hmm. his home state. And he would have to take all of the delegates there. Mm -hmm. And he'd have to do it in such a way that uh, the public begins to notice him in a much sharper way. Mm -hmm. And basically what he would be doing is creating his position to go to Cleveland, Ohio. Oh my goodness, yeah. his mm -hmm. home, uh, mm -hmm. you know, his home area, his home state, uh, and try to work something out mm -hmm. there. And the only way that that works is if uh, Donald Trump does not get the required uh, number of delegates for that right. first vote. Right. Let me right. ask yeah. a quick follow-up on Kasich. Uh, he was on record just a week or so ago saying that he would not accept a, uh, a position as vice president if Donald Trump were to tap him on the shoulder for that. Did, were you surprised by it? I was, because um, you never know what uh, people will say, and you never know if they might change. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I mean, there was talk this morning on the various networks that maybe Marco Rubio, young, Hispanic, involved in this might emerge as a potential running mate. Mm -hmm. I think that that would come as a great surprise to Chris Christie, mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, who is standing behind uh, Donald Trump at almost every photo op that I've seen lately. Lo lo uh, looking almost know. like a hostage at times, yes, but nevertheless. Yes, uh, yes, someone said that if you see him blink three <laughs> times quickly, it's Morse, uh, it's Morse, code. It's Morse code for uh, please release me, uh, let me go. Um, Let me ask you about issues because issues. There's, <laughs> this, is, this is not an election about issues, and, and clearly it's not because here's here's the thing that really befuddles me: neither Trump nor Clinton is doing very well when it comes to the question of who do you trust. Neither one of them can get fifty percent in that, and yet they're winning the votes. And you talked about the possibility of a Trump-Clinton election as being the ultimate insider versus the ultimate outsider, but then it's really the ultimate lesser of two evils argument, isn't it? Yeah, uh, but we're still left with evil uh, right. in that situation. And uh, I just, the ABC Washington Post poll that came out just yesterday puts Donald Trump ahead of uh, Ted Cruz by nine points. Uh, honest and Trump, uh, trustworthy uh, Trump, 45% say that. So not reaching the halfway point. Mm -hmm. 
understands our problems, 44%, has the right experience, 42%, right personality, 43%. Hmm. Overall, his uh, favorable uh, rating is uh, 46%, his unfavorable is 52 These are numbers, wow. uh, you know, that to me are stunning. Yeah. And you see the same thing with, uh, with Hillary Clinton and uh, whether or not she would be uh, considered uh, honest and trustworthy by the uh, voters. Um, this gets into something that probably we don't have time to uh, discuss right now, but several years ago I went around the countryside saying that uh, American politics were at a breaking point. Mm. I think we're there. It would and appear. I think the people are saying that in the votes that they cast during these primaries and caucuses. Well, we may be headed towards a political revolution in the United States. There was certainly a revolution a hundred years ago in Ireland that started up. And the professor, who would make a great party guest because he can talk about a myriad of topics, <laughs> will be here to talk about his new book about Ireland and that revolution from a hundred years ago. And that comes your way next here on Harvest.